so I've thought a lot about what I wanted to do with my first vlog and I decided that I wanted to talk about one of the big turning points in my life which um, is a story I call the tale of two concussions. So when I entered my junior year of high school I knew that this was the year. This was the important year in which I was going to prepare this spotless portfolio for college. I was going to have my curriculars lined up like unopened Christmas presents. I was a racehorse chomping at the bit. I was going to take the most challenging classes I could, get the best grades possible. Those Ivy Leagues didn't know what was coming because it was me, was how I felt. It all seemed like it was going so well. The first month in, I felt powerful in my determination and single-minded ambition. However, a month in, in a particularly vicious game of Capture the Flag, while I was in the middle of running as fast as I could, a movement that is metaphorically relevant in all areas of my life, my feet were kicked out from under me, and I went from having my nose to the grindstone of life to having it in the dirt. I don't remember the moments between falling, they would come back to me in pieces, but I remember laughing because it was as though my brain had broken, and I was not used to having nothing going on in my head, and suddenly there was silence. And I didn't know what to do, so I laughed and tried to get up, and but my ankle was sprained and something was wrong with my knee. Kind of out of it, and I'm half crying, and and when I got to the hospital, they told me I had a concussion. I was told I had to lie in my room for hours, because, and I found it to be true because if I didn't, I would have these horrible headaches. And so I would go to school, sleep in the nurses for study hall and lunch, barely make it home, and lie in bed for hours and then get up the next morning and do it again. And it was so unlike the life that I lived or wanted to live. It was so unlike the expectations that I had for myself. I started playing piano when I was five and suddenly it looked like squiggle marks and I would just sit at the piano and cry. I forgot phone numbers I'd known my entire life. I couldn't participate in classes. I became dependent on groups that I used to lead. I couldn't do any extracurriculars because I was too busy healing. Which is a sob story that is well known. However, I did get better. Slowly, of course. As I slowly came back, I started to apply myself again. I felt like I'd really arrived when I won this national scholarship to go to Berlin, along with these other brainy kids, and I read the essays that they submitted alongside mine, and they went to these medical internships in India, and all these, like, really um, impressive things, and I felt like, oh my gosh, like, I'm here, I'm in the group, I finally found people who are interested in what I'm interested in. So. Yeah, my ego was just inflating like a hot air balloon. I went, and it was a Warhol show, we went to the Berlin Wall, we did all these amazing things I can't even list, so many adventures, so much story in that place. It really is an incredible city. So one night we were at this club, and we were all dancing, and it was so much fun, and then we went back to the hotel room, and we just kept dancing, and we pushed all the beds together to like have like this huge couch. It was so much fun. Um, but then when a friend of mine, Allison, she like jumped back onto the bed, but then she landed in between the crack of the two twin beds, and so she fell, they opened, and she fell straight on the back of her head. And so we all kind of paused. There was this big intake of breath, like, oh my god. Because <laughs> she didn't move, and then she didn't get up. And we went over and we picked her up, and she sort of can't move, and she's flopping around, but she's laughing, and everyone's laughing, and we're like, oh my, and in relief, saying, thank goodness, you know, she's okay, and they kind of keep dancing, and, but, um, I don't know, I felt like something was wrong, and so I, I lowered her to the ground, and I sort of sat there with her, and I tried talking to her, but she's laughing too much, and thank God I was sitting there because I caught her as she fainted. So now the alarm bells in my head are really going off, so I send a friend down to go get the chaperones, and I have someone call the front desk, and, and then I ask her, how many fingers am I holding up? And she can't answer. And she starts to freak out because as she can't say what her name is, she can't say what country that we're in, she can't say what state she's from. But when the chaperones come up, she won't let go of my arm. We spent the whole night in the German ER and, you know, carrying her to the bathroom and holding her hair back as she um, tries to vomit and just, it was very scary. But during that time, I tried to tell her stories of what happened to me and how it's really difficult at first, especially for an overachiever, but how it gets better. When we finally got to see the doctor, 
Allison was diagnosed with a minor concussion, as I had thought. And it gave me this great well of pride when she said, my friend Eliza picked me up. And so we brought her back to the hotel and she slept for the next day and a half and I stayed with her because I remember needing a friend. I've had many meaningful experiences in my life and I don't want to say that one is more important to me than the other because they've all taught me different things, but I do think that no other time in my life has taught me how to do what I do the way that I do it um, and be purposeful in my actions so much as the way that the time I couldn't do anything has taught me. I'm really looking forward to the next segment. I hope you are too. Um, English in Action, I say goodbye to you like yesterday. I love you very much and I miss you a lot already. And I know so tomorrow morning some of you are shipping out. So good luck. I have a feeling I'll see you again.